Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I have got a couple of fun cards for you today, and we're kind of going to do the opposites. So we're kind of going to have an any and an outy. Uh, and first of all, we are going to start out with some nice, quick and easy ways that we can do this. I've got some fun products to use today that, uh, yeah, just change it up a little bit for me. So first of all, I have this rings around the circle. This is from Spellbinders, and this is simply going to create uh, the shape for us that will become the window. Of course, you can use squares, circles, hearts, rectangles, triangles, I don't know, anything is going to work. But this is what I have been ogling over for a while. These are called Doodled Owls. These are from Dress My Craft. They are transfers and these little owls are gorgeous. Now, I am not usually one to lean towards uh, cartoonish sort of images and honestly, I don't particularly enjoy coloring them in or anything like that. So for me, uh, instead of having to invest in stamp sets and things that look like this, I can just purchase these for a much cheaper price and I don't have to do the work and the coloring behind them, but I still get the cuteness level. So you can see here on the back, this is all of them. There are also a whole lot of sentiments on this page as well, which I appreciate because these all go with these gorgeous little owls as well. And I'm going to use this today of course you can absolutely just use any stamps any pre-made images any die cuts anything to go behind these windows now as i said earlier this is what i'm going to use to create uh, the window for the first one so i've just gone ahead and done it i use the second to smallest and cut out three of these obviously that leaves me with three gorgeous die cuts but we are going to use those in our opposite version so keep hold of these ones and again this is just three easy windows and can be made out of any shape whatsoever now, because I can't eyeball things very well, I'm going to sort of even up the page a little bit by using some rectangle dies. These are just the stacking dies. I have the infinity die set from Hero Arts, and there's, I think, maybe 18 or so dies in here with very small margins in between each size, which means you're pretty much going to have a size to fit what you need. I do recommend that if you are starting out that a couple of these sets does certainly come in handy. Now, I have definitely used lots of the Dress My Craft transfers before, um, but if you haven't seen them before, they are, it reminds me of a temporary tattoo that I had uh, every now and then as a kid growing up, where you basically take off, they do have a little film on the front side, and all you have to do is take off the plastic film. I leave it on all of these. As you can see, I cut out the one that I need and then I leave on the plastic film to begin with. And that way I just know that everything is covered and I'm not going to accidentally take some of the transfer off or, or something like that. I don't even know if that's possible, but that's what it is in my mind. Um, first of all, we're also going to create a little bit of a background. Now I'm going to use old paper and twisted citron onto a waffle flower stencil mat. I have just found this to be a really handy sized mat. The other thing I really love this for is uh, when I am doing ink blending and it holds the page for me. I definitely was in a convert when I heard everybody talking about this, you know, uh, how the silicone sort of grips everything and it makes it much easier. I will admit that after purchasing one, I got this one on a really good discount. Um, and yeah, I like the size of it. It's nice and small to store. And I, I, I like the cleanup and I like the fact that it grips the paper. It's good, actually. And if you put your ink pads on here, it also grips those too. So uh, I wouldn't say it makes it sit hand, hands free uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it definitely holds things really steady. Now, this is all you need to do is peel off the front plastic. So you can see it's just this very clear thin layer here. I peel that off and I put them face down onto the, just like at the moment, it's going to be a scrap piece of paper. You could definitely do this straight down onto your project. I have shown lots of videos before where I just put the image straight down onto my card base or my project. Then you can just use a damp sponge. That's just water and a makeup sponge that I'm using. And you sponge the back of these. I have seen people use uh, water brushes as well or a paintbrush with water. Um, just get some water on the back of it. And then you start to see the image appear and you know that that is starting to work. It doesn't take very long at all, just a few seconds. And then you are able to slide off the backing piece. That's when you know that it is really ready to go. Don't force it early. Otherwise, you might sort of uh, muck up the image but it really doesn't take long at all. 
Now, obviously all of these sentiments are in reverse because you put them face down onto your project and then they will come out the right way up. And so I chose this little one here that says, I'll miss ya, I'll miss ya. <laughs> um, and so I thought that was just really cute. As I said, these are all sort of punny sentiments uh, that go along with the owl theme. Now at this point, I felt like I was missing a little bit of a border. I'm definitely a border sort of person and I was missing a little bit of one with this. So I'm going to very much cheat here. I've taken a piece of cardstock and I'm just going to make a very thin border. Now, could I have uh, done the whole piece of paper? and But then I felt like it was going to be more to line up with the images that I was going to put behind there. So for me, the easiest option was to just cut out the center. Now I definitely could have done a better job of saving the center. At this point, I was just frustrated with myself that I hadn't left enough room for a border to begin with. So I was just adding one on. I'm going to start off by using some Mode Lawn Distress Oxide ink. I'm actually going to move into some Rustic Wilderness just because uh, this was a little bit too light green. I'm just picking up some of the greens that are in some of the owls. I I love the looks on their faces. I love sort of just their character and I think that is just a really cute little look. As I said, I'm not super into cutesy as stamps all the time and I don't like the outline of white borders when it comes to die cutting them. So often um, though, that's the reason why I won't go towards them. But I do love these little guys. They are easy enough to fussy cut, which is something else that I love. I've got videos coming up where I will do that indeed. Um, but for this one, we are just popping it behind. There you can see I've got my frame already set. I just used some double-sided tape on the back of my uh, card front there. Now I called this a window because it feels like obviously you're looking down into a window. It creates a little window to look through and I like the added dimension that some foam tape gives me at this point to create some more dimension through the window. So in the bottom here I'm going to have the sentiment and then I actually only need two of these owls. I at one point was thinking I would put the sentiment on the front there and have three owls poking through the windows and I just wanted them at these cute little angles and honestly this card came together pretty quickly. If I had also used some pattern paper for the front there, it would have come together a little bit more quickly, but I enjoy that process of creating some paper. And then this is just a really simple, gorgeous card. I'm going to add some liquid glue onto the back here, just those bits that don't have the exposed adhesive on the back of the foam. And then put this down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And then this one is pretty much ready to go. So this is the one where we have the images that are recessed. They are down. Um, um, underneath the card front and then the next one we're going to create is going to be the opposite. So for this next one I'm going to use the same L so it's going to be pretty similar um, but ends up looking really different. I'm going to go with blues for this one just because I went with greens last time which is definitely outside of my comfort zone but I like the finished look. Now I'm going to add some tumbled glass distress oxide ink. I'm using a finger dauber and I suspect that my ink pad needs re-inked, that's for sure. But that just shows that this background does not need to be perfectly ink blended and nice and gorgeous and smooth. I truly am just getting the ink on there. I am protecting the back of my card base just because I never want color or anything to be on the back of there. Um, I try and keep it as pristine as I can. If I do get paint or something on it, there's two options. One, add more paint and more color or uh, cover it up with something and that way it looks deliberate. Or option B is to cut off the front of the card and apply it onto a new card base. So you can see here, not perfect at all. This is definitely not a smooth layer of ink, but I was just enjoying putting it down. And then I'm going to come in with the um, new-ish stencil from Tim Holtz. I believe this one is called Brush Hex maybe. Uh, and I'm going to come in with some tumbled glass distress oxide ink. Now I'm just going to cover up that little edge there because I don't want a harsh edge. I want the pattern to go all over the front. I'm just giving it a very light misting. And of course I'm coming in with tumble glass uh, spray on top of tumble glass ink. So I really do just want it to be a relatively subtle look. 
Now I turn the stencil upside down which means I'm not going to get ink everywhere. I just put that extra little piece of paper over there because I don't want to, um, as I said, get any harsh lines from the edges of the stencils. And then I give a light spray again and then I do have all of this gorgeous ink left on my stencil. And I can't resist, and this is how I end up going off on tangents, I swear, but I'm not going to today. I do want to just quickly show you that if I put down another card front here, I'm just going to pop the ink side down and then I'm just going to use a scrap piece of paper to give a little bit of light pressure just so I don't get all inky fingers and then pull this up and I get a gorgeous print from the stencil and that was all ink that I otherwise would have washed off. Um, I'm going to dry it just a little bit and then turn the stencil around and then try and get any leftover ink there to see if I can pick up just a little bit more to finish off that pattern and I think this is gorgeous. This is a brilliant start to or a back Background to another card or any other card making or arts and crafts you might like to do. So waste not, want not, and I think even adding a light layer of Distress Oxide Tumble Glass ink over this, that would fill in the background a little bit more and still leave those gorgeous lines. Now this is what I was talking about earlier, I went ahead and die cut some extra rings around the circles, that's the little decorative circles, and then using the Hero Arts Infinity circle die set, I also cut out some plain circles, and this is what's going to go in the centre of our decorative ones. Now you absolutely could just do it on the base there, but I am going to add a little bit of dimension to these, so we are just popping our little owls, take off that layer, that first layer, and then this one's going to be a bit bigger, so I trimmed it off um, just because I didn't want it sticking to my desk or my background or anything. This one here is going to fit perfectly, and then on the last one I am actually going to have another sentiment too. So again, I just take my little makeup sponge, give it a light dabbing with water, and then once the image starts to show through a little bit more, you know that it's working, and then you can slide off the release paper, I guess, um, and you're left with this gorgeous permanent image there. So that is really fun. They do take a couple of seconds to dry. Um, I just don't want to touch it too much while it's still just doing that little drying process and make sure I don't ruin anything at this point. But I've taken the blues from the body of one of them and the hat of the other, and that's where I sort of thought I would create a blue background. Now here's where I'm going to add the hoot hoot hooray sentiment that comes from the transfers, and I'm going to pop this down on the other circle, and as I said, this is going to be the last one. This is just a really fun, simple layout showing that you can either recess the images down into your project or you can pop them up on top and it still looks stunning either, either way. Absolutely remember that you can do this with any stamps or dies or pre-made images. There is no rules around what you would like to do in your card making or your crafting. So use what you have in, on hand and give this a go. If you would like to show me your creations or your makes, I absolutely love to see them. And the easiest place for you to be able to send me pictures is over on our Facebook group. My Facebook group is called Come Crafting with Natasha. I will leave a link to it down below or you can just search it on Facebook either either um, and it will pop up. And then join our group and there is such a fantastic community. We have a really supportive community and there is lots of fabulous ideas that also take my ideas and extend them or change them or make them their own and that's what I absolutely love about my channel. I truly am just a, an at home card maker. I have a tiny tiny little desk in the corner of my room and I love this is my me time. I am a busy mum and I just really love this me time crafting and creating and so I share it with you and I hope that it inspires you or that it helps you through or it's someone to chat to for the day, someone to listen to maybe while you do a job or so. I do get the most amazing emails. I appreciate the time that you take to send them. I love reading your stories and your reason why you love crafting, or I love just hearing from you. So thank you for taking the time and effort. Of course, I do have a snail mail address. I have an address that you can send a physical card to um, that I absolutely love going to get mail out of. I skip to my PO box. I love collecting the cards that you send me, so thank you. I often post them over on my Instagram page. Um, and unless you don't want me to, let me know if you don't want your card to be shared, the front of it at least. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.